Yes, in case you were wondering, I feel about as good as I look today. <laughs> Uh, it's been a hard week for me and I have just felt gross. I had a cold sore at my nose. I've had a headache. I had a really rough period. My face erupted. Oh my God. And uh, yeah, it's just not, it's not been a nice week. So I have decided that I'm not doing another day of feeling like this because I don't want to feel like this, especially the week leading up to Christmas. <laughs> what I want to do today is I haven't told Glenn, but I would like to surprise him this evening with like a little Christmas dinner. Um, we haven't done anything Christmas this year. I don't know about you guys, but we just haven't felt festive. We didn't decorate. We didn't do anything Christmassy. And I'd like to try and make up for that a little bit tonight. So my plan is I would like to shower. I mean... <laughs> And then uh, I would like to do my hair, my makeup, get dressed up, feel nice. And I am gonna do a little decorating in the living room. And then ideally I would like to order from a local restaurant and have like a little date night here with Glenn. So that's kind of my plan for today. I hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Please don't forget to stay till the end for a sneaky giveaway. And uh, let's go. That's better really funny that when I'm not really feeling very good for whatever reason I just wallow I wallow in my own self-pity <laughs> I don't shower I don't know why I know it makes me feel better when I do but like sometimes you just can't muster up the energy and uh, it's been one of those weekends so feeling a little bit better and let's get started one heck of a cold sore. I haven't had one that bad in a very long time. Uh, I'm probably day four with this and that's the only reason why I'm considering putting makeup on it. Don't put makeup on a cold sore that is active and like weeping. You'll regret it. It's just not worth it. So wait until it's crusted over like today for you to do any damage control. But I am going to use a little bit of green concealer I think to just color correct some of my obvious acne spots and a little bit around my nose where the cold sore was. And uh, yeah, let's do that actually. Um, I'm gonna start with some primer. I'm using the Smashbox Primerizer. Love this stuff. It is just super hydrating and I really need that. I'm pretty sure I originally got this because Alana Rama suggested it. And Alana knows great makeup. You guys know I've loved Smashbox for a long time, but this is one of their standout products to me. I am going to start with correcting these spots. So when I color correct, I usually like to spot it on my face and then go back and do a blend in. I think that it just helps kind of stick in that spot a little bit more if you just give it a second to kind of set before you start in with your blending. I'm also going to use the Color Science Total Eye Corrector on my eyes. This is a great product. I found it this year. It's a medical grade skin product, so it's more of like a skincare item than a makeup item, but it doubles as a makeup item and as a corrector, and it's very nice. I can use all the help I can get with my under eyes today. I did not get any sleep last night, and on nights like that, I call it hot dogging. Let me explain. When you were to go to like a sporting event and like they have like hot dogs and they have them in those like machines that like automatically roll them, that's how I feel in bed when I can't sleep is I'm like hot dogging and rolling from like side to side. So anyway, I call that hot dogging and last night was a very hot dogging kind of night. So uh, I'm going to jump in with some heavier concealer right away. I like using the MAC Pro Longwear usually on days where I am needing a bit more concealer. I feel like it just brightens you up. So I'm gonna do a thin layer of this just on my under eye and on top of my lid. Okay, that's a good start. I am going to move on to foundation and I'm using my Luminous Silk by Giorgio Armani. I've loved this for so many years and I've repurchased this year after year and I'm in shade 4.5. It's really lovely. So I've been doing my base first lately with my makeup and I've been really loving it for two reasons. The first being it allows my hair to air dry for a little bit longer and obviously I'm trying to use less heat on it and uh, if it's partially dry then I don't have to blow dry for as long. And the second reason is because I don't really like working with like a sticky or tacky base. And I find that if I just put on the first kind of layer and let it sit and let it sink in, when I come back to it after like I blow dry and do my hair, I don't know, I can just fix it better. Like these little spots that weren't covered, I can just kind of spot treat and it just, I don't know, it just works better for me. So I highly recommend you try if you haven't already, because that has been working for me. 
Also, a quick tip, I'm sure you already do this, but um, what I'm doing around like the crevices of my nose or even like the corners of my mouth, I'll tip the beauty blender to the side that doesn't have any product on it and I'll blend it out with that so that it kind of takes away a little bit of the product. Like it, it obviously is still there, but it's not as heavy handed. And so I just flip back and forth between like the product side and the non-product side just so it doesn't get crusty. Applying a little bit of lip balm so that I don't have like total foundation lips. I mean, I still have total foundation lips. Whatever, it's close enough! Okay, hair time. I usually wait until it's about this dry to do it. It's like maybe 80% dry. And today I'm gonna teach you how to do my favorite hairstyle that I've been doing the past couple of years, which pretty much combines a couple of techniques that I've already taught you just with a bit of a wave. Wait and see, it's great. I love it. You can get like day two, three hair out of it. It looks so beautiful and it's very, very simple and quick. So today I'm gonna to start off by using a heat protectant, Eva NYC, their main magic 10 in one primer. I just knocked my new piercing and oh my God. Oh, I like that primer because it feels like you're using a hair oil and a primer at once. Your hair just feels like really silky afterwards. Okay. I'm going to pin up half of my hair and then using a round brush, I'm going to blow dry. I'll meet you when it's done. Okay, I've moved back a little bit so that you can get all of my luscious hair in the shot. There's a lot of it, I know. So what I first start off with doing is obviously sectioning. And the way that I like to do it is pretty much at the top of my ears and then one more at the top afterwards. But let's start here. Okay, so bust out your straightening iron. No, you cannot use a curling iron. Those are for noobs. Those are for people that want like ringlety curls. And we don't wanna do ringlety curls. We want like lived in, cool girl kind of hair, right? So I use this. The whole idea with a straightening iron is that you have to hold it at the right angle for your curls to not look like they're made with a straightening iron. What you do is you will take your section of hair. I'm gonna take just over an inch, but there's not like a lot of hair in there. And when you turn it and pull it, this needs to be at a 45 degree angle. If it's like this, it's wrong. If it's like this, it's wrong. Come from a 45 degree angle and you're gonna ski it down the slope. That is how you do curling with a straight iron. Once you've mastered it, you're gonna be like, oh my God, why have I not been doing this forever? Seriously. So I like to do my pieces around my face, usually curling outwards and back like this. So you take it, you twist it, grab the end, and slowly guide it through at a 45 degree angle, slowly turning and pushing it through. And then I take my hand and I adjust the curl afterwards. And it gives you a nice, big, bouncy curl. Now, if you do it at like, say this kind of an angle, and all you're doing is like pulling it through, it's gonna look like you've just pulled it through your hair and you're gonna fry your hair and it looks just crunchy and not nice. So that is a trick with using a straight iron. Okay, so for this hairstyle, this is actually very, very curly and I probably won't make all of them this curly. I'm also not gonna take the iron all the way down to the ends like I did. I don't know how I did it, I just did it to show you how to do the curl in the first place, but honestly, I'm gonna stop right about here. So I'm just gonna straighten this little end bit so that it's not as aggressive and this curl will eventually fall a little bit. So we'll just leave her like this for now. On the other ones, what I'm gonna do is this curl was backwards twisting. The next one that I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do waves. So I'm gonna alternate doing curls and waves. And the waves are gonna look like this, where you're pulling it away, and then you're pulling it away and down, and away, and away and down. And sometimes you might have to go back over top of it, but this is what gives you the pieces that look like they're a little bit more natural. They're not uniform, they look a little bit like, hmm, does she have wavy curly hair naturally? Maybe, that is that style. So if you need to go back through and touch up any part of the wave, like this little one isn't great, so I'll just touch up that little spot, and then you can just leave it. Again, you really don't need to do the very, very tip ends, but if you do, you can always go back over and just like straighten up the ends a little bit at the end. Okay, so I've done a curl, I've done a wave, and I'm gonna go back to doing another curl. But instead of the curl facing this way, I'm gonna do the curl facing forwards. So the same kind of deal, but twisting it towards my face and sliding. So then it leaves it like that. 
And now for this one, I have a little bit too much hair that is straight up here. So again, I'm just going to go in and just adjust. And then you're good. And then you can brush them out with your fingers. It really doesn't matter. You don't need to keep them intact. You can just keep them messy right from the start because you do want them to kind of drop and settle a little bit. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go all throughout my head, basically alternating whether or not I'm doing a backwards curl, a frontwards curl, or a wave. And I do it haphazardly. Every single time is a little bit different, but it kind of gives you that hair where it looks like, oh, there's not any uniformity there. And I love that. I think that that is such a beautiful way to do your hair. So I'm going to do that and speed this part up. also want to point out that I am not taking exactly even sections. I'm ranging from maybe like a half an inch to an inch long section and I try to, if say I did a curl that was like facing backwards right underneath, then I'll do a curl facing forwards or I'll choose to do a wave. I basically don't want it to be like curl on top of curl on top of curl all facing the same way because then your hair can basically just melt into one big curl and it's like more of like a singular old Hollywood style kind of deal. And that's not what I'm going for. Okay, and when I get to the top, I always brush it first. And I try to figure out like, okay, my part was here. And then I kind of keep it separate into the front so that I kind of keep the already done hair back. And then I'll only do one side at a time. So this is a side with more hair. I'm just going to clamp it up, clamp it back and do that last like that. Also, if you can try to remember on these top pieces, don't like drag it down immediately when you're doing your curl or anything else, almost like straighten it upwards and then go into your curl. I find that just gives you a little bit more volume that way. <laughs> she curly. Okay, and then I go back to my brush, making sure that everything is separated and very like loosey goosey soft. I always check the back of my head with a handheld, handheld, handheld mirror, uh, just to make sure that I got all of the bits that I needed to get which looks like I did. And then the last thing I do with my straightening iron is just go through the end bits and just make sure they're kind of tamed and straight. You don't want it to go from like a curly cue to like dead straight, that kind of looks really weird. But if it's like a soft wave that melts into just kind of like, just chill, soft looking hair, like that's kind of the goal. So again, I'll go back to brush it out. And then this is the part where I add dry shampoo for a little bit more volume. I always spray aerosols and then I run because I don't want to breathe it in. So I'm just going to hold my breath while I spray <laughs> and then run. And then I massage it in, making sure that it's distributed throughout my roots. I go back to the brush and I just make sure that everything is soft and tamed and then I hit it with a texturizing hairspray. This stuff is a game changer. I am so glad that I discovered texturizing hairspray because I find that regular hairspray is just too sticky. It just, it doesn't really work that well for me, but a texturizing hairspray is a little bit looser of a feel and it gives a tiny little bit of grit. I don't know if grit's the right word, but like, you know what I mean. It just gives you a little bit something, something and it helps your hair hold. I also make sure to get a little bit in the roots. So this is the finished hair. I love it. This is what it looks like from the front and here's what it looks like from the back. I just think it's such a simple way to do my hair and like I said, it lasts me several days. I would love to gift five of you with the Good Hair Day Trio from Eva NYC. This has the primer, their dry shampoo and a beautiful hair mask. In order to win this, obviously, please follow my channel. And in the comments down below, I would love for you to tell me something that you love about Christmas. 
just easy. Let's keep it super simple. I will let you guys know within the next week who are the winners and I will grab your information from you. Please make sure you also leave your Instagram handle in your comment because I probably can message you and find you easier on Instagram. If you don't have an Instagram, it's all good. I'll still message you on YouTube if you win. It's probably easier if I have a little bit more contact info from you. Okay, that is it for my hair. Let's jump back into the makeup. Alrighty, I am going to jump straight in doing my brows and I'm using the Essence Pencil that I love from the drugstore. This is so inexpensive and such a nice little product. The only bummer is that it doesn't have like a proper spoolie on the end. It just has like a little brush and I don't really find that helpful. But what else? And I'll set those in place using Gimme Brow by Benefit. I feel like I say this every time I use this product, but this is such a staple product for me. It just thickens your brows and makes them look so nice. And if you don't already own this, you probably should. Mm. Since I already have some concealer on my eyelids, I'm just gonna make sure that I don't have like the little crease before I start in with some shadows. I'm gonna use the Modern Renaissance palette today. I have not brought this out in well over a year, but it is a very well-loved palette of mine. I love these types of tones. Uh, I'm gonna start off with their Raw Sienna and probably a little bit of Burnt Orange, so these two. Mix them and just pop them in my crease. How many times on YouTube have you heard someone say, I'm gonna pop that in my crease? <laughs> Okay, I wasn't gonna do it, and now that I'm looking at it, I kinda wanna do it. So I am gonna use some bright colors on my lid, just because I said I haven't done like a bright look in a very, very, very long time. And I'm feeling festive, so I, hmm. Okay, I'm just, I'm gonna pack it on. I'm gonna pack it on, and I'm probably gonna use a ColourPop shadow over top, but let's, one thing at a time. I'm gonna start in with Venetian Red and do that kind of on my outer V. One thing that I've been a little bit more cautious with when I'm applying a darker shadow is that I'm not bringing it so low on my eye, like down here, because I want to keep my eyes like uplifted and awake. And I previously used to apply it almost all the way down kind of into this area, and it's pretty unnecessary for my eye shape. So I would really suggest having a look at your placement if you feel like your eyes are looking a little bit too like sleepy or like closed. Um, take a look at where you're placing stuff because you can just do these minor little adjustments and it's like, oh my God, what have I been doing? Before I blend, I'm gonna use the same brush and pick up some of the more pink color, which is Love Letter and put that a little bit more on the middle and inner part of my lid. Right now, I'm just placing color. Like I'm not really worried about blending it just yet. Okay, so to blend, I'm taking a super fluffy blending brush and I'm just kind of diffusing the color in towards my inner corner. When I was stamping it on and applying it, I didn't put it like super close to this inner corner just because I didn't want the color to be too intense and crazy. But when you use a fluffy blending brush and kind of just like edge the color in, I think it just looks really nice. So I'm going to do that on both sides and then I'm going to move to a slightly denser blending brush and I'm going to blend the tail. Another thing I'm trying to be more aware of when I'm doing my makeup these days is blending upwards and holding the brush not like down like this in blending. So just feel like when you hold it up and more straight on and pull up and away from your eye, it also helps with that kind of lifted look. I added just a whisper of the Cypress Umber. It's that darker brown color. And I added that just to like the upper outer crease. And now I'm also going to blend, blend, blend. Okay, I feel like that's relatively even-ish. And what I always do nowadays is I take my beauty blending sponge with the tiniest, tiniest little bit of concealer and I just clean up the outer edge just so that it kind of brightens and lifts. Just making sure that that's really like lifted. Okay, on top of my lid, I'm gonna use Babykins from ColourPop. This is a Super Shock Shadow. I love these and I haven't used one in a very long time and it's a little bit dried out, but whatever. Just on my finger and just in the center of each lid, I'm just gonna add just a little bit of texture. Okay, I 
feel like I see that in person. It's very subtle, but I don't really see it very much on camera. Whatever. Uh, I'm going to do my inner corner with just a tiny little bit of this Primavera, kind of goldy, beautiful highlight color. Oh my gosh, curling my lashes makes my eyes water. I'm gonna use the tiniest little bit of eyeliner on the outer corner, just in this kind of little area. This one is from Benefit. This mascara is one from Charlotte Tilbury. It is the Pillow Talk Push Up Lashes, and I really like it. It's very much like a grab every single lash and individually coat it, kind of thickening style mascara. I don't love the brush. It's like one of those plasticky, pokey ones, but once you try it, you're like, oh, okay, that makes sense why the brush is like this. I just feel like their product is not a wet mascara. It's very much dry and sticky almost and you kind of have to comb it through but it works really well so i've been liking doing this as like my first coat and then i like using more of a lengthening mascara as a second coat okay now is when i'm going to spot conceal anything that's still kind of showing through a lot and i'm also just going to add a little bit of brightness to my under eyes using the ysl touche clay i have this white one but I'm mixing in with like a little bit of the concealer on the back of my hand and just brighten up my under eye area and I'll put a little bit down my nose too. Now I haven't been using powder all over my face lately. I've just been using it very sparingly in the spots that I need. Today I'm gonna use some of the MAC Mineralize Skin Finish and just kind of go over those spots that I had extra concealed. For bronzer, I am going into my all-time favorite, Marc Jacobs' enormous bronzer that I still have not hit pan on. It's actually ludicrous. I've had this for so long. I'm pulling out MAC Burnt Pepper for my blush today and just being aware of placing it kind of through here rather than through the front middle. My cheeks are already enormous. Like when I smile, it's all cheeks. So I want it to kind of be focused more on that area. Again, lifting me up. And I always apply a little on my forehead and a little on the tip of my nose. I'm gonna put a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury mascara on my bottom lashes. Just enough to coat them to a bit of black liner on my upper lash line. Make my eyes profusely water. <laughs> and for highlight, I'm gonna use a little bit of the Makeup Revolution Vivid Highlight in Golden Lights. This is such an oldie, but a goodie. If I was actually wearing this out and like going to do something, I probably would pair it with some lashes, but I'm not gonna bother because I'm not gonna bother. I am, however, going to line my lips. This is from Rimmel. It's in Blushing Nude. And then to finish my lips, I'm gonna use some Velvet Teddy. Classic. Okay, let's spray and then I'm good to go. Okay, this is my finished makeup look. I'm really happy that I went with the brighter color because I feel like it just, Made me feel good. I don't know, it's just, it's so funny that something as simple as playing with makeup can just lift your spirits and change your mood. And I'm so glad that I did this. So thank you for being here with me today. I am now going to, I think I'm gonna set up like some Christmas stuff now and do like a little like sped up compilation for you guys. And then I guess I will order some DoorDash. I gotta tell Glenn to stay upstairs though so that he doesn't come down and ruin the surprise. Let's go. All right, the Christmas decorations are hidden away in here. And I didn't use them last year either because we were in Mexico for Christmas. So I'm gonna dig these out and I think the stuff that I want is just in these two. So this is what I'm working with. Let's go. I'm 
sure that is the capacity of my Christmas cheer, but it's something, right? I think that Glenn will like it. I'm going to order some DoorDash now and just scroll through the different restaurant options. I kind of feel like a burger. What do you want? You want the chicken? The Lola, the chicken? Oh, do you want some? I could order you some. I feel like that's a very holiday thing to do. Order your dog DoorDash. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna place an order and then I will meet you guys back here after I get changed and I will surprise Glenn with my little decorations. Mm -hmm. 